Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, the Hormone Whisperer. Welcome to our morning quick tip. Um, today, for example, is going to be a wonderful quick tip because it's one of the things as a doc and the wellness ways across the country that we use clinically a lot. So I'm doing this quick tip for two purposes. Uh, number one, I want everybody that watches our quick tips to get the, the great understanding of this amazing, actually amazing herb, okay? Because aloe is actually an herb and it's classified as an herb. But what happens for all of you patients from around the country always ask us why aloe vera? Why is it used so much? And why, for example, that this herb, you know, should be used on a, on a regular basis, you know. Um, there's actually a great, great quote out there that has been used for, you know, actually several thousand years where it said, food is thy medicine, but medicine should be thy food, okay. This is one of those things. This is one of those things that we may use clinically, but the one thing about it, for example, it should be used on a regular basis when those medicinal plants, when those medicinal herbs that actually have massive benefit just having it into your regular diet, okay? I don't even like that word diet, but the idea is, for example, on a regular basis, it should be one of our major foods. So aloe vera has, you know, a history for thousands of years. But if you think of it this way, even as a kid, you know, what, what do we do? You know, our mom would always yell at us and say, hey, put your sunscreen on. And we didn't as little kids, and we go out and get burnt like crazy, and all of a sudden we come in and mom would grab the aloe plant itself. And actually for that purpose is, I actually grabbed my mother's aloe plant from her house and actually uh, uh, threw it here today. And she used to grab, rip it off, cut it open, and rub it all over her skin, and we would get some relief from it that way. So why? Why was that such a great property for it that way? So today we know, for example, that it's used, uh, obviously, you know, the, one of the most known things for his skin, but it also is used for, you know, things as far as the GI. But I'm going to go a little bit more in detail, for example, the great benefits and why it actually is, is kind of, like I said, one of the most important things that you guys should actually have in your diet, okay? But on top of it, guys, okay? So ladies, it's actually essential for you guys, but guys, I'm going to tell you why, for example, you, why men should actually use aloe vera on such a regular basis, and you can be very surprised. So where do we start? Um, well, you know, the, the funny thing is this. We're going to start with my, my most important aspect of aloe that may seem so simple, but it's something that we miss so much. You know, aloe itself, okay, the plant of immortality, the, uh, which is a great, the Greeks name that, um, the aloe itself, for example, is 99% water. Actually, as you look at this nice little, you know, break off of the aloe plant, it's kind of cool because actually at home we have ones that are like this long. I mean, some of those aloe plants, you know, uh, you go to Hawaii, which we absolutely love Hawaii, and you can go and break off the aloe branch and it's just massively huge. So we just have the small aloe vera plant. But actually, people realize, with the exception of the gel itself, it's actually 99% water in there. Now, why is that so important? You know, I always tell people, people will come and say, Doc, you know, I'm kind of constipated, what should I do? I'm like, drink water. He was saying most people are so deficient in water that what happens is your cells need to be hydrated that way. And that's one thing nice about aloe itself. Now, here's one of the biggest mistakes. People will go and buy aloe, okay, you know, gel, and try to drink aloe gel. Don't do that. It's like drinking snot, <laughs> okay? Don't, you know, get some good aloe juice that way. And the majority of constituents is actually water. So it actually is the, one of the best hydrating liquids. If you ever want to do an amazing combination, actually, and they actually sell these at the store now because, you know, food companies are smart. They're going to go to where people are moving towards. But if you want to take some coconut water and actually take some, you know, um, aloe juice, mix it together, and then throw like some, you know, pineapple and stuff in there. And actually it's a wonderful drink post workout post for athletes. You know, a lot of people actually move towards Gatorade that way. Man, if you mix aloe and coconut water together and actually, you know, and then put some flavoring like, you know, some pineapple or something in there, that actually gives it a wonderful, you know, flavor after because we'll tell you guys, if you've ever had aloe, just straight aloe juice, uh, it tastes like dirty water. It really does. It doesn't taste that great, okay? The benefits are, are massive, but what happens is this, you can actually make and basically a, quote, electrolyte mineralized drink from putting, you know, coconut water and aloe juice together. And once again, those two don't taste the great combination. Why? That's why you got to add some decent flavor in. So take some, like, just a little bit of maybe, like, organic pineapple juice or some other flavoring or mango or something like that, put it together, and actually it's a 
great post workout. It's a great post athletic drink for all the you young athletes out there that are running towards Gatorade that way. So it's something quite, uh, quite amazing. So it's one of the easiest ways to rehydrate that way. So young, young athletes, get some aloe juice because once again, I'm going to show you all the other properties that actually help it. And like I said, you young males, well actually all males that way, I'm going to show you one of the key aspects that nobody teaches about and the benefits of aloe, especially for men. Okay. So quick tip number two, it contains over 75 known active ingredients. Now, I like to pull up journals, okay? So that's why you always see me researching things like that. Um, so I always like to document things that are there. I've read journals where it said over 200 constituents. I see, for example, people talk about 75 to 100. So let's just say we, we know for sure that there's 75 good known active ingredients, okay? Now, what are they? I love this part. You know, we, we go back to, you know, those young men, male athletes that way, or just in general for repair. It contains 20 of 22 known amino acids that we have in our body. Known. And, and once again, out of seven to eight of them are essential. Essential means that you have to eat them. Okay. For example, we have essential sugars that you need to eat. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Essential. That means your body doesn't make them. I always use the example as uh, you never see a lion chewing on an orange. Do you know why? Because they can make their own vitamin C in their own body without eating it. We cannot. That's why vitamin C is essential. We need to eat it that way. So the great thing is it might be 99% water, but it has massive other constituents that actually help build our, our body that way. So once again, Great for essential uh, amino acids that way. Has several fatty acids, okay? That's why, for example, you say, Doc, what's the property for skin care that makes it so well? It actually has fatty acids. It actually has cholesterol in there. Hold the phone. It has cholesterol in there. Aloe juice itself actually gives the plant-based cholesterols that we need for all cellular repair. There's one thing that, if you guys have been following my hormone series, understand cholesterol is the building block for all steroid hormones okay so putting aloe juice into you is actually not only a great plant sterol that we can get from cholesterol so you don't have to do it from a muscle meat okay but what happens is like i said the cholesterol can actually be put on our skin through aloe and help with that cell repair that's why if you even look at aloe is actually known for some stem cell regeneration you know there's a lot of big research about stem cells well guess what aloe itself is known as a stem cell stimulator that way now Here's one of the major quick tips if there's one thing that people don't realize. Okay, a lot of people say, Doc, you know, I have my testosterone measured. Now, once again, this is for you guys, okay? Women too, all right? But let's really know testosterone defines us as men who we are. If you ever look at this way, um, one thing that is known for testosterone um, is actually oysters. Now, people say, Doc, what? Well, I had oyster. I don't want to eat seafood. I don't want to take a shellfish that way. Well, oysters are extremely high in zinc. All right, and zinc is one of the building blocks for testosterone. So you have zinc, you actually have you know cholesterol, and for example, you get cholesterol from multiple things that way. Well, guess what? One property that people don't understand about uh, aloe, aloe is extremely well, ex extremely well formula. Okay, one of those old ancient remedies, and that's why it's that's why it's known as immortality. Guys, if you want to live long and you want to have a great life, make sure your testosterone levels stay normal. Well, with the compound that, uh, that aloe has, it's very high in zinc, okay? Very high in zinc. Now, now guys, that's also good for both men and women and children for their immune systems because, once again, zinc is a, a very important aspect of it. That's why aloe has a major effect on our immune system that way. But back to the testosterone levels. You have your cholesterol your plant-based sterile cholesterol, you have your plant-based zinc, guys, at, comes together, does an amazing job for testosterone building. Let me say that again. Well, let's wrap it around for you young athletes, okay? You want to increase your testosterone levels. You need the amino acids. You have the zinc. You have the cholesterol. Guys, it's a major formula for your overall health. Immortality, heck, performance, for example, so we're going to call it, guys, the plant of performance. All right? So once again, the one thing I love about aloe, it's so readily available. You can go to, this is one of my favorite brands. Once again, let me say this because I want to have a, be very clear. I have no ties to this company. I just research the companies of what I like for its purity and potency and stuff of like that. And so the Lily of the Desert has a wonderful organic aloe juice. I have to admit this is funny. They're probably not going to like this, but they don't even really know who I am. Okay? It's funny because they have an organic brand and then they have a little cheaper brand that's not organic. You know what the difference is? Preservatives.
That's the only difference. Preservatives. Don't use the preservatives, they're toxic to your body. But this company does a wonderful job at an organic brand. And as you can see, for example, use the whole leaf. So we comp they compress this, they can actually get the whole leaf out of there. They, had, they do a wonderful process for it that way. Don't get the one that has the, the preservatives in there. Preservatives are bad for your GI and, and, and actually does a, a craziness on there. But wrap it around on just the, the ingredients I've given you so far. Amino acids, fatty acids, once again, zinc, guys, testosterone levels, for example, are going to love you. Actually, you actually do this on a regular basis that way. Now, once again, you know, the dosaging that way we should use. If you have some GI disruption, you actually should use somewhere between, you know, 100 to 200 milliliters. 100 milliliters is about seven to eight tablespoons that way. Like when I first start with the patients, I'll say, take a shot glass two to three times a day. If you have any major GI disruption, man, you want to take four to five shot glasses a day or up to 200 milliliters. There's about, I think about maybe, let me see here, there's about a thousand milliliters in this bottle. Yes, over the course of, uh, of a day, you're going to use up a lot of that bottle. But when you actually are so irritated on the insides or you want to actually get back to a normal level, you may have to use a little bit at first. Over time, then once again, you can use, no joke, like 30 milliliters a day, you know, or 30 milliliters every other day that way to actually maintain, you know, good levels that way. So there's your, if there's one clinical pearl, guys, aloe is phenomenal phenomenal for your testosterone levels. Use it, it's absolutely amazing. You young athletes, especially you young males that want to actually want to perform at a high level, use it for that purpose alone, okay? It contains mono and polysaccharides that feed a normal flora. Actually, you know what the funny part is this? So we talk about the cholesterol, we talk about the enzymes, we talk about the things that are available in there. The major actually benefit to aloe is actually the sugars in there. Okay, that's what a mono one polysaccharide, they have very long chain sugars in there and it feeds our immune system. Let me say this, people don't realize this. Your immune system runs off of sugars. Yes, it does. That's why when you actually eat crappy, that's like people say, doc, it's flu season. There is no such thing as flu season, okay? Flu season is you start getting the holidays of October, November, December, and you actually jack up on sugar. And then on top of it that way, you get no vitamin D and you're stressed out. And you wonder why your immune system is suppressed. But you, what's that? We have the article too. Oh, we have the article, we have an article? The flu article, yes, we just posted that yesterday, I think. Don did a wonderful job of writing that for us. Yes, and check out our flu article that way. But the idea is this, is uh, um, the, the um, immune system actually uses these polysaccharides. So as you actually drink aloe juice that way, you have all of your microbes from orally to rectally that way actually use this as a prebiotic. All right. So it's used, for example, as a food for the bacteria that massively protect you and help you with your digestion that way. So it's actually a wonderful formula to feed the normal flora. You have a ton of normal flora on your skin. That's why it's even good to put aloe on your skin that way. If you really want to actually take two uh, combination things I love together, once again, coconut oil, aloe gel, mix it together, wonderful skin formula. Internally, coconut water, aloe juice, once again, put into the internal that way. Amazing formulas that way, all right? Now, if you actually do this, I'm going to stop and say hi to some people because I know a lot of people are, are on there. Um, Dr. Ryan Miller, can you use too much? Actually, you can. You really can. Um, actually, you can use too much of anything that way. Uh, and there's one component in aloe called aloein, A-L-O-I-N, for example. It's a yellow pigment. You see it more at the stalk, actually, as you rip it out of the thing that way. That yellow pigment, if taken too much, now it's really hard, it really is. I mean, the most thing that will usually happen if you take too much aloe, you'll get some diarrhea, okay? Well, and it's even hard because even if you take, if you, even if you have diarrhea, you can take actually aloe and most of the time it'll stop your diarrhea because why? Because there's usually some battle going on microbially inside the GI, inside the gut, and when you take aloe, it actually calms that down, and so the diarrhea slows down. So I guess the easiest way to find out how much too much aloe is for you is have a normal GI start taking aloe through the day and see how much you do before you have diarrhea. So if you like what I'm talking about today, once again, please do me a favor. Like it, tell me where you're from, say hi to me. I love always saying hi. And actually do me a favor, share this. Um, I believe the information that we give to you, for example, is, is life-changing. And, and I always give you a different perspective. Most people don't talk about testosterone when it comes to L. But once again, when you're looking at building the body in the, in the quick tips, in the way the wellness way approaches everything that way, we come up with a very different perspective and then we apply it clinically. 
See, if, you, if a person is actually here for low testosterone, see one of our doctors across the country, our doctors are trained to understand this. Our doctors know this. You say, Doc, most doctors don't know this. Well, they don't really know it, even though you can look it up. Literally, there is journals everywhere. You know what I'm saying? There is journals everywhere. It's just that they're always looking for some natural remedy. They, they use aloe more like a natural herb to calm the GI down instead of understand its major building blocks. It does to do it that way. So they use aloe to respond to something you know, inflammatory instead of actually doing things so you're not inflammatory in the first place. So if you like what we're doing, always doing, please do me a favor right now. Stop, like it, share it, and actually let people know that, for example, that you can go to our YouTube channel. Brandon will actually post our link for our YouTube channel on here. So I want to say hi to everybody that's here. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of you guys on. Thank you so much for watching this morning. I really do appreciate it that way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, good morning. Um, Alice, good morning, everybody. It's kind of funny, I don't always see everybody's on here. Morning, Nancy. Morning, Lindsay. So here we go. So next property, okay? It also contains cholesterol for cellular repair. Also remember, that's why one of its major properties for wound healing is there. When the major sugars, though, I want to come, go over, it, it, <laughs> I don't know how they really come with these names. I know, that, I know most names come from some Latin aspect that way. Um, but there's a major sugar that actually exists within aloe that gives us some um, major aspects. And so we've been talking about man a lot. It's called a glucomannanin. Trust me, I didn't name it. Glucomannanin, okay? And what it is, it's a rich long chain polysaccharide that actually is listed as a growth hormone. Okay, so if you want to Google search this, it's spelled G-L-U-C-O-M-A-N, there's your man, N-A-N. So G-L-U-C-O-M-A-N-N-A-N, okay, glucomannanin, okay, mannanin. It's, a, it's actually a growth hormone. So hold the phone, guys. So we have zinc, we have, we have cholesterol, we have a growth hormone, and with that, with the, with that glucomannanin actually does, I want you to say that, you know, five times really fast, it actually stimulates and actually takes the fibroblasts, okay, within our body. Now, fibroblasts actually help us produce our collagen production. So if you're worried about leaky gut, if you're worried about actually even, you know, wrinkles, aloe does a wonderful job. That's, that's why aloe has actually become very popular in a lot of skincare products because it stimulates that growth hormone, stimulates all the fibroblast production within there, and once again, reduces wrinkles. You know, I'm very proud of my skin. That's why people touch it like, Doc, you have nice skin for a man. Well, it's because I'm always putting coconut oil, I'm always putting aloe and stuff on my skin now that allows for that actually very tightness, okay? So as you age, once again, everybody's looking for the anti-aging formulas, which I hate that uh, term. There's no such thing as anti-aging. It's well-aging that you want to do that way. Use these things on your skin. And that, that glucomannanin actually applies to both men or women, even though it has the term man in there. It's actually great for both of us that way, both female and male. Also, one of the major minerals um, and vitamins it has in there is actually vitamin A, okay? Vitamin A is really good for GI repair. We have different layers of our GI, and vitamin A does a wonderful job of repairing that lining in there, okay? It's a deeper lining, um, for example, that actually allows us to actually get some gut repair. That's why, that's why just if you forget everything I said so far, just equate that the aloe is going to help with massive intestinal growth, repair, and inhibition. Now, what's the inhibition about? Number three, it inhibits the growth of candida albicans, the most common yeast overgrowth there is. It's actually, it's kind of cool. I pulled out a ton of dental articles, dental journals here, and I even put the Journal of Clinical and Diagnosis Research for dental that way, and I love this quote that they used it here, okay? Aloe vera has a lot to offer in the field of dentistry. A lot of studies is on the way to utilize the effective antimicrobial properties of this miracle plant. See, they call it a miracle plant. Guys, you understand that you can grow aloe, even the large stocked ones, even up in this cold environment in your house. All right? It's actually a wonderful venue to actually use. You can grow it yourself. You can buy it. I mean, aloe itself, I think the, you can buy it on Amazon for like, you know, 10, 15 bucks for the, remember, but get the organic one. Don't do the one with preservatives that way. But the properties of it, microbial, okay, what they're finding out in dentistry, okay, that's why you're now seeing a lot of dental products use xylitol and aloe together in their toothpaste. Let me say it again. Xylitol and aloe together in their toothpaste that way. The amount of microbial inhibition it does of actually reducing candida and other flora that don't belong there, all right, actually is incredible. 
Okay, so dentistry itself is doing massive research on aloe. So you can even use aloe as a mouthwash that way. Now, let me say this again. Aloe tastes like dirty water. It really does. Uh, won't lie to you. You know, that doesn't, um, I have to mix it. I usually take um, our relax, our magnesium, and actually put it together with the aloe so it doesn't taste so bad, all right? But once again, so sometimes with kids, you have to create the formula for them to actually do it, all right? But once again, I don't care if it tastes bad, it's actually amazing. So dentistry itself is saying we can inhibit the growth of our bad bacteria. On the flip side, guess what, guys? They found out it massively reduces gingivitis. Why? Because of all of the lymphatics in our mouth, guess what? The polysaccharides feed, once again, feed all of the what? The immune cells to be produced to fight off anything that's there. It also stimulates, because of the glucomannanin, actually stimulates the fibroblast production within the oral cavity, and guess what? Tighter gums, less bleeding, less actually gum disease that way. Wonderful thing, that's why you're starting to notice aloe within toothpaste that way. I'm a big fan of it, you know. If you, you know, the one thing nice today, the way products are moving, a lot of products are becoming available, and you can basically go on Amazon and buy any of this stuff. You can buy a good organic aloe, xylitol-based toothpaste, jump on aloe and just even Google search, or um, Amazon just Google search it that way, and you can find great products like this. Uh, there, maybe we should, I could probably post a link of some of them that way, but let me say, once again, Lily the Desert, buy it anywhere that way. It's a fantastic product. Now, so this inhibition is so key, all right, because, you know, you always have people say, I want to do an anti-candida diet. All right, that's fine, do you Sam? I have no problem with that. Basically, let me tell it to you, avoid sugar. Avoid processed sugars, there you go. But also, once you actually avoid it, you have to inhibit the growth. You have to have it killed off that way. Al is a great formula to do it. Quick tip number four, it makes pooping good. If the, major, the one thing I can honestly tell you, being a doc for, for almost 20 years and actually having talked to thousands of docs and trained them across the world, one of the greatest problems we have today because there's so much inflammation, there's so much, uh, um, let's say, bad habits that lead to so much disruption in the whole GI system that way, um, not having enough bowel movements is so detrimental to people's health. If there's anything that we could possibly do to change someone's life is to get them to poop properly on a regular basis. Now, this kind of is funny because what people do is they come and say, Doc, you know, my bowels are normal. I poop every day. How many times? Once. You're still constipated. All right? You're not, you're supposed to poop more than once a day. All right? Ladies hate that because most ladies sometimes that I know, most ladies that I meet poop maybe once every other day. And once again, what does that do? That causes some major problems in the GI. Guys, listen, I'm not joking. And ladies, I'm also not either here, is get some good organic aloe juice, whole leaf that way. Make it part of your diet till you can actually get that, actually a bowel movement on a regular basis. And then what you can do is this. That will give you the time to, get, to see the proper doctor to get your bowels back to normal so you're not Bit, you're not uh, dependent on taking, you know, 100 milliliters of uh, aloe juice per day to make you poop. Because here's what happens. Aloe juice is the amazing food. So remember, food is thy medicine, but medicine is thy food. This is a medicinal plant that should be part of your food. See, a lot of people miss that second part when they say, well, everybody says, food is medicine. Uh, yes, but guess what? An apple is a food. But herbs and medicinal plants are medicine that have to become part of your food. This should be a regular part of your food. Actually, this is actually, you know, it's actually, you know, probably one of the simplest things that you can actually do to start. So if you have not started anything in your health venture, let's say this is the first video you ever saw me with that way, go to your store, jump on Amazon, go get some good organic whole leaf aloe juice, start to put it in there, you'll start to see some great clinical change, not only from your GI, but you also know some other things will happen, especially you males, because you will see a progress in your testosterone levels, which will actually not only make you, for example, uh, understand your performance in all areas of life will go up, but once again, your longevity. That's why I believe that they act when they termed uh, aloe vera the plant of immortality. I believe because once again, it's one of the greatest building block medicinal herbs on the planet for you. And it's so readily available. It's so easy to get. So 
I hope you enjoyed my viewpoint on allo. I hope you enjoyed why, for example, that you understand now, even if you're a patient, why you know we have you take it on a regular basis that way. It's more than just that soothe the GI. No, once again, it's a major building block for, once again, your immune system, your GI, your oral cavity, your normal flora. Now, once again, what do you do when you first start? If you first start, I would say take about seven tablespoons based on your size, okay? Use more if you're bigger, use less if you're not that way. But you can experiment a little bit with it. If you actually take too much, guess what? You might get some diarrhea. It's okay, once again, just back off. It's not gonna have any long-term negative effects to you. That's the nice thing about it. You know, people say, Doc, can there be any side effects? You can be allergic, once again, to anything, okay? You can be allergic to anything. That's why you'll see people say, well, Doc, I reacted. Yes, guess what? Personally, I react to an egg. I don't tell people to stay away from eggs. I say, if you react, don't do that, all right? So the great thing about Al, please do me a favor, put that in your diet on a regular basis that way. Use medicine as thy food, okay? And actually, you're gonna see a great clinical change. So, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning. On the wonderful quick tips, look for our, go to our Facebook page, go to our YouTube channel. Please do me a favor, stop right now before I end this, like and share it, because this message today could actually change the direction of not only your life, but also somebody that you know and care about that way. And this is one of the simplest things to start to get people back on a road to recovery to actually see them live a better and healthier life. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, The Hormone Whisperer. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.